people think of environmentalism, usually the first thing that comes to mind is climate change and carbon emissions. And then along with that discussion usually is like rising sea levels, melon ice caps, polar bears, maybe like forest conservation. But usually what's missing from, from these discussions is people and how people are affected by these. And that's what we really want to bring in our message is telling and showing how people are affected by environmental issues. So this spring we went to Southern Illinois to visit with Georgia De La Garza, who is the founder of Shawnee Hills and Hollicks. We stayed at the Vineyard Indian Settlement. And Southern Illinois is coal country. There are a lot of coal mines there, and Georgia guided us to several sites of extraction. And there, it was really easy to see the environmental destruction. There is diesel running through the water, out of the mines and into the farmlands nearby. There are plumes of coal dust in the air that changed the color of the sky. And when you breathed in, your lungs would constrict a bit because you were breathing in dust and heavy metals and things that were really irritating to our lungs. And that was just the beginning of it. We ended up talking to many people who live near these coal mines and have to deal with these impacts every single day. And that's what we wanted to share with you. And so one of those people that we spoke with was Barney Bush the CIO of the Vineyard Indian Settlement, and he was telling us about his experiences and what it's like to live around all this coal mining and coal extraction. Um, I am Barney Bush, and I'm the, uh, the descendant of Chief Sedowan's Band of Shawnees that established uh, a uh, presence here in around 1810. Not only have the sites been disturbed, they've been destroyed. Uh, I've had, you know, that's a good question. I have had in, in, in the last couple of years, I've had to come to terms with living in spite of it, emotionally living, spiritually living, in spite of that destruction. I've had to say, you know, because there's the, that uh, strip mine over here around where my mom and dad are buried and where some of my dad's people are buried. <clears throat> and that strip mine is all around there, you know, and they were buried there at Saline Ridge thinking that that was a beautiful place to look off toward the hills, which we call mountains here. That that, that would always be, nobody dreamed that you would do this to the land. No one imagined that you, you know, that you could be so heartless or so without spirit to do something like this. And yes, it's affected me. I'm going to try not to break into any emotional tears or, or break down on the floor crying in front of y'all. But it's it's been really hard. It's really hard because that's exactly who we are. That's at the heart of our identity is this land and our old village sites and our graveyards. There's nothing more. We don't have any ulterior anything else. You know, it's all based, land-based kind of thing. There was, there's been stories of people who felt so homesick and still couldn't come back here to live. I've got cousins that don't live here now. They hate it here. They just, just how do you live there? How do you live with all, under all that crap? How, do you, how can you stand that? I said, well, it's home. Well, I know that, but how do you live with it? I said, because it's home. I said, and how do you live away from it is the question. How do you live away from it? He says, I hate it. in uh, Hardin County. All that land from Garden, what's now called Garden of the Gods, which didn't have a road into it back even when I was a kid. Uh, it was used as, a, as somewhat of a holy place. We didn't call it that, but we had a name for that area over there. And that's where young men were taken to, uh, to uh, on weekends, you know, to sleep out and talk about their dreams. No. What you have to say back to him, do you have any evidence that you can clean up this coal? Coal is not cleanable. Coal is coal. There's no way you can take the sulfur out of the coal. People, there's all kinds of gimmicks, all kinds of little things that have run through the politics of the coal industry where people have made millions of dollars at taking sulfur from the coal. It does not happen. You cannot. They say, well, we got scrubbers. Well, what happened? If, uh, uh, if I take that piece of wood there and wash it down, is it not is it not a piece of wood anymore? 
it's still a piece it's still a piece of wood the coal is still a piece of coal no matter how much you wash it you know you wash the dust off of it make it shine you know uh, it's still cold and it's still full of sulfur and it's still full of the kinds of things that kill people and kills the earth kills the land coal uh, coal is an excuse for money you know the only way that I see to have any effect in America is through the money is to cut off the sources that's all I see because they're not going to do it because they have a conscience that's the last statement